Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. Come spend some time with us today. It is a breezy, cool November morning. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do a little more work on our chicken coop today. Don't know if we'll even get close to being finished, but we're going to do a little more work on it. We've got some great ideas from folks in the comments on different things. And uh, we appreciate all the advice. Also, I'm going to be doing a little more cooking today uh, for Thanksgiving dinner. So I've got, I'm on biscuit duty and I've got to make some homemade mac and cheese. So I'll be showing y'all how I do that here in a little while. We're going to talk about what all we got left to do. I've got to frame out the door. I've got to frame out this end right here. And we had a viewer suggest swinging this like making one big door over here and swinging it off of this post and i'd actually thought about that after uh well after we quit recording that day so i think that's what we're going to do and where it's going to be angled upward um with the slope it should swing open and not hit anything but we've got some pretty heavy duty hinges and i think we're going to i think we're going to try that i don't know if we'll get around to that today or not but then I've also got to fill in these gaps here with a two before. This is the only side I have left, filling that and that. And that's just the purpose of that. I mean, it's actually kind of wasting the two befores, but at the same time, it's giving me a real flush surface to nail the wire to when we do put the wire up. But I've only got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six that we've got to cut for that. See how I've put the two by four in there? It's like a spacer, which it stiffens it up too. So it does help us out, but it gives us that real flush surface there to attach the wire to once we put that on. And then I guess the way I've got this door frame built, the door is gonna sit inside of this hole here. I actually wanted it to be on the outside of it, but I think I'm gonna make it to where it goes inside the hole. So we'll have to put a door stop though, because if not, it's going to swing into that electric fence. Yeah, for this big door. Yeah. Yeah, it will. What we're going to do is end up moving this fence a few feet down the hill and give us more room between our raised beds and the fence. And I mean, we're only going to be losing just a few feet of pasture. Well, so. that needed to happen anyway, even if we didn't build this. Yeah, because we have, yeah. we've run out of room right here. We've got everything in too tight against the fence. So up here on our gate, we have cedar post. And everybody told me way back when we put these in, which has only been what? Has it been 10 years Probably now? 10 years, yeah. Have they been 10 years? Yeah, yeah, because we've been living here 11 and what long? Gosh, has it been that long? Yeah, they're probably 10 years old. Well, I guess they've lasted all right then. Yeah, they're probably 10 years old. But everybody said that cedar post was rot resistant. And that might be true to some extent, but this one's not near as bad as the other one. This is a uh, eastern red cedar. Now up here, see the top side of this post actually held out pretty good. But look where it was in the ground. And look at the hole there. You can see how much is rotted out. These posts ain't going to be here much longer. No. So what we're thinking is since we've got to replace these two posts that the gate hang off of, our fence will probably be more in line with like right here instead of up here where it's at. And that'll give us a few more feet between the chicken coop, the raised beds, and everything. And we'll actually be able to hopefully give us enough room to drive around all of it. Right, right. But yeah. Because it kind of like comes out like this anyway. It does. So. But then when we built this, there was nothing else up here. No. Not a thing. Not a thing. But yeah, if anybody tells you that cedar is rot resistant, it might be if it's like above ground. Um, you know, not actually making contact with the ground. But if you are using cedar for post, 
I hope you have better luck than what we did. Now, I mean, I guess 10 years is okay, but when I, when somebody tells me something's rot resistant, <laughs> I expect it to last- 20 years. 20, 30. <laughs> Cause I've, I've seen some uh, black locust that the posts have been in the ground for- Who knows how long. Yeah, m longer than I've been alive. Yeah. And they're still just as solid as a rock. Yeah. So I kind of expected the cedar to be the same way, but it wasn't. But once again, maybe we done something wrong on our part. I don't know. Nice having these saw horses now and not having to lay bend down and lay it on whatever I can find. think before I get started on the door, I'm gonna put me in one more corner brace right here. I see, when I shake it, I see a little bit of movement there. And I'm gonna put me one either here or here. And I believe that'll stiffen this thing up pretty good. That, that stiffened it up a lot. Ah. See, I'm trying to shake it. It's amazing what it looks just a little bit of bracing will do. You need to come out with that one. Come out a little more. More. 
Whoa. Am I going the right way? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we need another clamp to clamp the. If I wasn't so tight, I'd buy one. I will say these little clamps like that's handy. Are they? Doing this kind of work. Let's see if we can pull it together. That's, it's gonna be far away. I know. I mean, evidently, one of my cuts wasn't quite right, but. Look at them guineas watching them hogs. Look. I see them. All right, you're gonna have to quit worrying about the birds. All right. Worrying about what I'm trying to do. Take it. Bring that end over here. This one? Yeah. No, wrap it around it. Okay. Now come to me. Oh. Keep it coming. You probably wouldn't want me to build your house, would you? Well, put an Andy special touch on it. Hey, I think it's gonna work. All right, what you want me to do? You ain't gonna have to do nothing. I'm just gonna, all I gotta do is hold it up. All right. I mean, screw it up. Look at that. How close to that being square you reckon that is? I'm going to say it ain't nowhere close. <laughs> you might be surprised. Let me hold this in. Keep it from flopping like that. It don't look square. But it might well, be. What are you going to do? I don't know. If it ain't square, I really don't know. It should have been. All four corners were cut at a 45. But evidently one of my corners wasn't quite right. Let's stick it in the door frame and see what it looks like. Was it gonna, was it gonna work? I don't know, it won't fit up here. It likes a lot fitting right there. Well, the, the thing is not square. The door might be square. The hole ain't square. The hole ain't, yeah. There. there it goes. Well, ain't that cute? Oh man, it shows it not something ain't square. <laughs> I think it is the hole though. Yeah, I think it's the hole, not the door. Well, that'll be okay. We went to a salvage place near us, hunting some stuff. I don't know a few weeks ago. How much was them hinges you found? Twenty-five cent a piece. Yeah. So Andy like racked up on hinges and little locks but and, you know what what the big hinges we got are going to work but they're not i should have grabbed some of the other hinges they had and that would have been a lot better well we didn't know we, we didn't know what them. we were going to do yeah. we just grabbed a bunch of hinges because we're always using stuff like this yeah. and i said you know we'll just have a stockpile of them but yeah see we need the hinges that are made like this and i got on the big hinges you know they triangle in on both ends oh. That dust will blow all over you, won't it? Mm -hmm. And then we'll take and cut another 45 on this one and maybe use it somewhere in there. I don't know. Let's see where am I going to put this in that. Once you put some wire on it, you won't never know that. Well, no. Well, ain't that special looking. Ain't it toot. 
That's gonna look plum cute. That way. Okay. Yeah, except it ain't square. Oh, I want nobody knows. Or the hole ain't square. Look, right here we got like a half it's, inch gap, and over here look, we it, got a three quarter look inch. Look down here. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> I mean, it is a chicken coop, but still, stuff like that sometimes. Well, you know, once this wood dries where it's treated wood, it's going to dry and it's going to warp up every oh, which yeah. way you can think of. So, well, this is the outside. Okay. So, remember that. Yep. Pick that wire So, back lay up. it flat down. It's starting to get hot. You are? Yeah. i would be all right if the wind wasn't blowing. The wind's killing my ears. Why I wear one of them snoogans? I can't stand snoogans. If you see me with a snoogan on, it really is cold. All right, slide. Uh, let's slide it up the hill. Pull it back your way. Whoa. Don't have to flat. slide it some more. Slide it right there. Whoa, whoa. Just be patient. Got these because they got that big head on them. I thought they would hold the wire, but they just about ain't big enough. So I've got longer screws here that'll go into this part. I'm gonna have to go up there and get some short screws okay. for this piece, cause these will go all the way through. What I'm planning on doing is, see, I ain't got nothing on the door yet. I was gonna take my clamp and jack oh, the door up just okay. a little bit. Not, I might get push up some from. No, it ain't big enough. Yeah, I was going to just pick up on it. I might, I might well, we don't need to pick up much. Let me see. Like that? That's, yeah, that's going to be a plant. What I'm going to do is just put one down here, and then we'll open it and make sure it's going to work. Okay. It's tight. What we'll do is give it some time to dry out and it'll probably shrink up and then yeah. it'll go good. But if it don't, all we're gonna have to do is sand it's like it's it hitting up. right there. So sand just, it just a little bit. Yeah, just grind a little bit off right there in that knot. But that actually works. It works good. Works good, don't it? Yeah. I mean, it, it works, but it's it's crooked. It's okay. The chickens don't care. Yeah. I asked them, they said they didn't mind. They don't? Nah. Well, good. Right there. Is that in there enough? What are you talking about? Oh, you hang on, you're hitting the finger. You don't want your finger screwed to it? No. Be too tight. It's already too tight. That's what them things are good for. <laughs> there you go. You fixed it. Perfect. I need a backstop in there to keep it from going in too far. But we'll worry about that later. All right. Well, that door's done. That one's actually the, probably the hardest one we had to build. Because it had to fit in that hole. Well, it had to fit in that little tiny hole. Yeah, this one here, I'm actually going to... So to build this door, I'm going to take 
and screw my board to the post and screw this one down here to the post and let them stay there and then build the door in itself and then when I've got the door built, I'll unscrew them and I should be able to swing it right open once I do that. That's a smart idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're gonna have to go in the house and start cooking, ain't you? Yeah, here in a few minutes. But we're at the point now, I think most of it I can, especially since this is gonna be screwed to this while I'm working on it, I can handle it by myself. On the corner over here, you know, last time we videoed doing this, we were unsure how we was gonna do this. And so we ended up just putting a, a post there and a post there. And we just went straight across the top of the roof of this little coop. And I guess I'm gonna let some wire hang down past that right there. Cause we got that level, but then you know the roof slants. So it's a bigger gap there than it is over there. And we'll just cut the wire off at an angle and kind of let it hang down. So hopefully nothing tries to go in through that hole. We may end up taking, having to take like a little block of wood and attaching it to it so we can nail that wire to. But other than that, the whole thing is just straight sides, except for this corner here. I guess I'll get to building that door out there. And I know that door is not gonna be square. But well, it, it can't be. <laughs> it, it can't, well, it can't be because the ground slopes. Yeah. But that's why I'm going to build the door to fit the hole. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, what's what I was talking about with the hinges. Um, you know, they'll mount like that. And so I'll either have to cut that little section oh, off or, yeah. or bend it around. I can bend it around. And it's going to be the same part, same way with the door. Like, I'll probably bend this piece around to where it'll go I around gotcha. the front side. If you don't need me right now, I may go on in and start my stuff. Okay. That'll work. Okay. All I'm gonna do is take me a measurement from one end to the other, and that's what length I'm gonna cut the, do the, the board that's gonna go up. Okay. And same down there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and be making the biscuits. I've got my oven set on 400 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and crack me up in a new jar of lard. And if you didn't know, I get this question quite a bit, but lard is shelf stable. When I make lard in the winter, which y'all will get to see me do a lot coming up because uh, when we start doing our hogs, I make lard to my little heart's content. So, uh, but it is shelf stable. It doesn't even have to be canned. The jars usually just seal themselves. And once it's open, I leave it out uh, right on my shelf here. So I do get that question quite a bit. Same goes for my bacon grease. I've never refrigerated bacon grease. Grandma, granny, mama, nobody ever refrigerated it. So I don't either. I just filter the bacon chunks out of it and leave it out. And I hadn't had any go bad on me yet. So same goes, goes with lard. Now I'm gonna be doubling the recipe on these biscuits that I'm doing, but I am not good at increasing recipes. So I'm just gonna have two bowls and make two batches the way I know how to make them. Things seem to turn out better that way, if I do it that way. But I need to melt me a big old hunk of lard here. Two cups of self-rising flour. And I'm gonna do the drop biscuit y'all saw, saw me make here a while back. This little sweet little old lady come across my Facebook it's been a few months ago now, and I saw her make biscuits the way I'd never seen anybody make biscuits, and decided that I would try it, and I really liked the way they turned out. So that's what we're gonna make today. I'm gonna do my next bowl. Two. Two cups of self and flour. We're gonna do a little sprinkle of salt in each one. There we go. I'm gonna use buttermilk today. Last time I made these, on camera anyway, I used regular milk. I've done it both ways. It just depends on if I have any buttermilk or not. And I bought some just for this occasion. So we're gonna do around a cup of buttermilk in there. That's probably about a cup. I'm gonna take my melted lard and go ahead and just pour that in there too. And then I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and mix this one together while I'm waiting on this other lard to melt over here. We're gonna add just a little bit of water to this until it gets to a texture that I can scoop it up and put it in my pan. And that is what I'm looking for, right there. All right, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put me a big old glop of butter in here for us to pour over our biscuits once we get them in our pan. bottom of my pan here so we're just gonna do a couple scoops each for each biscuit We're just going to take our melted butter and pour that and we're going to cook these for about 20 minutes and then we'll check on them. Since this door is not going in a perfectly square hole, by doing it this way, I know by play, placing this board up here against it and then marking the edges, I know what my angles are going to have to be to fit inside of this without having to measure an angle. So if I've done this right, this should go right in here. And there we go. And that's the cut that's going to be cut at an angle. The one up top here is square. While my line is still here, I can see the line pretty good. I just like to take and go ahead and give me a real good dark clear line to see on. But 
Let's see if it fits. A little tight. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's just a little tight. But that's okay. All right, now I've got to figure out me some sort of brace to put in this. I don't know if I should have one long brace going all the way across or if I should have more like short braces in. I don't know. But I think let's see. So when this door swings, we're going to swing on this side. So that means all the weight's going to be hanging off of that end. So I think I will make me a brace that starts up here at this top corner and will run down to the bottom over there. And that should help hold up that end of the door. So it would go in something, something like that. And wouldn't you know, I need another set of hands. Guess what I can do? Is mark this end first go ahead and cut it and then we'll cut that end Still about come out. What I think I'm gonna do is find me some really long screws and run them in this way before I actually unscrew this door and let it have pressure on it. Did it fall again? It fell again, and this time it broke the jack where it plugged into the phone. So, <laughs> y'all, the windy day has been tough on our microphone. Actually, it must have died because now it's not even on. I didn't turn it off. Killed it. Yeah, look at look at the screen on our microphones here. It busted it a while ago because the wind blew the tripod over. So, whatever else I film outside today, you get it's all the wind. It's going to hear some wind noise. <laughs> just how it goes. I don't know. I guess it's part of it, ain't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's aggravating. This doesn't blow that tripod over I don't know how many times. It's blowing hard. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, I'm going to make the macaroni and then I'll be... Well, I'm, I'm actually about at a point where I'm probably going to quit anyways. I've got just a few more braces to put in and then I need to get me some long screws to tie this door together. Sounds like we're going to be investing in more microphones. All right, the next thing I need to do is make my macaroni and cheese, y'all. It's so simple, but it's so good. I don't think it was too long ago that I actually made this one night for supper. But I need to go ahead and give me some water boiling. And we're going to need us a nice big old hunk of butter. I would say equivalent maybe to a stick for the amount that I'm gonna be making today. Now, usually when I'm making it just for us, I do like half of what you're gonna see me do today. You're gonna to need one of the little 16 ounce blocks of Velveeta. Just put that whole thing in there. And we're gonna stick this in the oven with our biscuits till the cheese starts to soften up some and the butter's melted and all that good stuff. All right, I'm gonna throw in the whole box of elbow noodles, just a regular, what is this, 16 ounce box. You gotta be kidding me. 
All right, so like y'all just heard, it's going to be probably some wind noise in this video now. And the sound's probably not going to be quite as good. I'm just using the microphone on the phone. But what I'm going to do from here is take me a brace from that point to that corner. And then from that corner to that corner. I think I'll do the same on this one. I'll put me a long screw right up through there. Uh, we got it just a hair too short. I guess that right there will work. That gives you an idea how my brace is going to look. Now we may still put something across this way. I don't know yet. I must, that's something I'll have to see how stout that door is once I'm able to hinge it and open it up. That is all nice and melted. My noodles are pretty much done. I've put my biscuits on roll for a little bit to get the tops nice and brown. I've drained my elbow noodles, so I'm going to pour those in the crock pot. Now, usually I just make this in the pot that I cook the noodles in, but because we're taking it elsewhere and I'm slinging noodles everywhere, um, this will be an easy way to transport it and keep it warm. I'll put this on keep warm until this later this evening. Let me go ahead and get my biscuits out. I don't want them to burn. There they are. You know, they cook up a little different in the baking pan they do in the frying pan, because I usually do them in my cast iron pan. But they look wonderful. I know they'll taste wonderful. I've made this these several times. They don't look the prettiest, but they taste good. So that's what matters. Now, let's take our cheese mixture. We're gonna pour it in our macaroni. Come on, cheese. We're gonna give this a good stir and get it all mixed together. This right here makes the best macaroni and cheese. I'm telling you, it's so good. Especially if you're somebody that don't care for like baked macaroni. All right. We're gonna add just a little bit of milk to this. And now here, in a couple of hours when we eat, I may need to add a little bit more milk. Y'all just play that by ear and make your macaroni the texture you want it. If it's not creamy enough, seems too dry, put you a little more milk in it, it's okay. There's no exact science to this. Just get it how you want it. So I went up there digging around through my stash and I found some of these long timber lock screws. Uh, these things, I love these screws. They're pricey, but they're nice for stuff like this. I think I'm gonna run it in there like that. And then I'll put me one in like that and the same here. Once I get this door down to where I can get to this side of the wood, I'll put me one in like that right there. And that should, I'll do that on all four corners. I'm actually gonna do that everywhere where there's a joint and that should really sturdy this thing up. I can go ahead and put in the angled ones, but I'm gonna have to take the door down in order to put it up there in the corners. So I'll just have to not forget to do that when I do unscrew the door. And so I don't hopefully bust the wood, I'm gonna drill a hole first. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, I like how that snugs all that up. might be ugly as old mud dog fence but let me show you something here look at that texture on the inside i hope y'all can tell how light and fluffy they are i'm gonna break bad and i'm gonna try me just a little piece of that see ya look they are just they're so ugly, but they're so good. <laughs> so good. All right. Well, I think that's going to be about all I'm going to do to the chicken house today. Um, we're almost to the point to where all we've got left to do is put wire on. I don't think I've got much use in worrying about aerial predators because we don't have aerial predator problem over there. And with this closed in space, like where it's so close, I just don't see an aerial predator coming in through that hole there. It's too, it's not enough of a window for them to jump through. But a coon or a possum could climb up the wire and come over the top and get in. And that is a possibility. And so we may put wire over the top just for that reason alone. But anyways, we're still undecided on that part. I think we're just gonna wait and see how much wire we have left and really I don't know. We're just going to wait and see. See how, how, how the mood hits us, I guess. Well, guys, I guess that's going to about wrap it up for today's video. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hope you might have learned a little something. We all hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. That's right. And Enjoy some time with your family. That's right. And eat plenty of food. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't go through the holidays without eating plenty that's of food. That's right. But anyways, guys, till we see y'all on the next one. Have a good one. Have a good one.